Hello, my name is Stuart Hamlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's lesson is another lesson about breathing and beginning to explore how you can link breathing to movement. If you haven't already done the earlier lesson that I posted, Ungluing the Lungs, it would probably be a good idea to do that lesson before doing this one. But otherwise, please begin by lying down on your back. Now, I'm just going to have a, a little bit of support underneath the back of the head, and you may want something similar. The idea of the support is that if you find yourself lying down on the back and your chin is poking up towards the ceiling, that's a good indication usually that you're shortening in the in the muscles in the back of the neck. So just by having a little bit of a lift, it can help create length through the neck. And if possible, begin the lesson by having the legs long. For many people, having the legs long can cause or begin to cause some discomfort in the lower back. So if that's the case for you, feel free at any stage in the lesson to bring your legs to standing. The important thing in any Feldenkrais class is that you should make yourself comfortable. Because when you make yourself comfortable, your nervous system begins to let go of its habitual holding patterns. So if it is possible to have the legs long, ha have the legs long. And it will probably take a minute or so before your nervous system begins to recognise it's no longer having to work to keep you upright in standing. But it will soon begin to recognise the fact that you're lying down and hopefully you'll begin to feel yourself settle a little bit more comfortably into the floor. One thing I like to ask my students in my classes is to imagine they have been dipped in paint, um, smeared in, in paint, and to think about what kind of imprint or what kind of mark their paint would be making into the floor that would enable anybody else to tell it was me um, lying here as opposed to somebody else. So you can think about how much of the legs are in contact with the floor, how much of the back is in contact with the floor, how much of the arms are in contact with the floor, and all of this will depend upon your own organisation. And then to begin to think about whether you sense any differences between how the right side is left is resting compared to the left. And then once you've considered that, please begin to roll your head a little bit from one side to the other. So you're not looking to force a range of motion. You're always giving yourself permission to do what is a very comfortable movement, keeping it well within an easy range. But as you're exploring this movement, just asking yourself whether you sense a difference in how the head rolls, say, to the right compared to the, to the left. And even though you may not be able to describe the difference accurately, it's sufficient to become aware of a difference. Because as Feldenkrais often pointed out, we learn, our brain is designed to sense and detect differences. And it's when you are able to detect a difference that you have information that you can act upon. Now, begin to draw your attention to your breath. And I just want to remind you again, this early part of the lesson, you can have the legs long or bent. I'm going to keep them long. 
begin to draw your attention as we did in the earlier lesson to your inhalations and your exhalations. So just beginning to notice when you're breathing in and when you're breathing out and you're not looking to deliberately change the breath uh, in the sense that you're not trying to deliberately take a bigger in-breath or out-breath. You're just noticing your normal inhalations and exhalations. And begin to notice how the breath travels into the nose, into the nostrils, over the upper palate, down the trachea, into the bronchioles, and then bring your attention to the right hand side of the chest, as we did in the earlier lesson. So you're feeling the passage of air, if you can, over the palate, down the trachea, into the bronchioles. And as you pay attention to the breath on the right hand side of the chest, you're thinking of creating length all the way along the right hand side. So you may remember from the last lesson that the right lung is larger than the lung on the left and there are three lobes to the lung on the right. You can think of an upper, middle and lower lobe. So you're thinking of the breath being drawn into the chest and down towards the pelvis on the right hand side, but just giving the breath permission to create length throughout the entire side. Now anatomically of course the breath is in the lungs but you get this sense, this feeling that comes from the movement of the muscle that the breath is filling the right hand side all the way down to the pelvis uh, and even into the leg and the foot and all the way up to the upper right hand corner of the chest filling the armpit area and even all the way up towards the ear that sense of length and movement being created And as you're focusing on that sense of length down towards the pelvis, you can probably feel how as the, you let the abdomen expand, you can feel the movement of the diaphragm, this major respiratory muscle that divides the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity. You can perhaps feel how as you inhale the diaphragm contracts and descends slightly, descends and expands. And then once that happens, there are then two other stages. The diaphragm contracts and descends, it comes up against the contents of the abdomen, and then it causes the ribs at the side to flare or protrude outwards and slightly upwards. And if you allow that sense of length to continue from the abdomen to the middle and all the way up into the upper part of the chest cavity, you can get this sense of the slight elevation of the breastbone and the upper rings of the ribs all the way up towards the area of the, of the neck. So three stages really, see if you can notice that the sense of the diaphragm descending or contracting as the abdomen area expands, reaching down towards the pelvis and this then movement into the side of the chest and then all the way up into the upper part of the chest. And um, we can describe the breath as almost being sucked or moulded or pushed into that area. But, but of course what's happening is your muscles are moving, the ribs are moving, the air is being sucked into, into those areas. 
So again, just spend a few moments thinking about the inhalation into the right hand side of the chest and all the time thinking of creating length throughout the entire right side. And then also, as you have this idea of length in the right hand side, see if you can also begin to think of the breath creating width, as if the breath is pushing, pushing out into the right hand side. And then also think of it, or giving it permission to create a sense of depth. So depth in the sense of the breath reaching not only towards the ceiling, but down, down into the, towards the floor, those ribs that are in contact with the floor, the right hand shoulder blade, the pressure increasing slightly into the floor. And what you, you um, may discover is that uh, as you keep your attention in the right hand side that you easily feel the expansion down towards the abdomen and maybe out to the side but it's maybe less clear in the upper right hand corner into the armpit area and down to the floor and if that's the case you just allow your attention to linger linger in that area where maybe the sense of movement the sense of the skin expanding um, the pressure changing is less clear and by just allowing your attention to remain in that area it's extraordinary how that um, focus of the attention can create that sense of length and width and depth. Now as I mentioned in the earlier class it's it's di more difficult for me to teach this because obviously I'm talking at the same time uh, now, once you've considered the breath on the right hand side of the chest, bring your attention to the left hand side of the chest. So we know on the left hand side the lung is smaller, there are just two lobes to the lung on the left hand side. But see again if you can begin to draw or pay attention to the passage of the air into the nostrils, down the trachea, uh, visualise or sense it moving into the bronchioles and then filling or expanding, lengthening the trunk on the left hand side of the body. And one of the reasons we spent a lot of time on the right before moving over onto the left is precisely because you want to sense these differences. You, it may be much clearer the idea on the right than on the, on the left. And if you do sense those differences that the breath isn't perhaps going into the left hand side as uh, easily as to the right, again you bring your attention to that area and just give yourself the time and the permission to sense the breath being drawn all the way down to the pelvis on the left hand side. You can even think of it reaching down to the foot and see if you can sense that sense of expansion of the abdomen on the left hand side that sense of the diaphragm descending and the ribs expanding or protruding to the side and the breath reaching all the way up into the upper left hand corner of the chest so reaching into the ribs at the side and into the area of the neck as if the breath is travelling all the way up towards the ear. And are you still able to notice the breath as it comes into the left hand side? Notice the breath into the nostrils, over the palate, down the trachea, 
and reaching mold, or molding or shaping that left hand side. It's a sense of you reaching th out three dimensionally into space with the breath. Again, if you tend to be rounded in the upper part of the body, if your shoulders tend to be a little bit grip forward and the pectoral muscles a bit shorter, so when I, I do that, I can feel how the weight has, is now shifted into the middle part of the back. Then you just spend time imagining the breath moving beyond that middle part reaching into the upper part of the chest so you feel the sense of length in the clavicle so that when you allow that sense of breath the weight, the contact shifts from the middle part of the back all the way along the spine. And now begin to bring your attention to both sides of the chest. That, again, just focusing on the inhalation, again, thinking of the breath reaching down to create length and towards the ears to create length, out to the sides to create width, towards the midline to create width, and towards the ceiling and to the floor to create depth. Now, please pause for a moment and just roll the head from side to side to see if that short focus on the breath has changed at all, the rolling of the head. And I can definitely feel it's a bit easier, it's a bit easier. And, and, and one of the reasons for that, if you think about it, is that many of the neck muscles attach to the ribs, to the clavicle, to the shoulder blade and to the, and to the area of the chest. So that movement we've created from giving our attention to the breath has, for me anyway, obviously allowed those muscles just to let go a little bit or to, to lengthen. Now, please bring both your legs to standing and have the arms just by your side for a moment and begin to reach your left arm a little bit away from you. So I imagine I've got a cup of tea just here by the feet and I'm just reaching to check that my cup of tea is still there. And then when I release, I think of drawing the shoulder up to the ear, the left shoulder. So I reach the shoulder and the arm away from me, and then I draw the shoulder up towards the ear. So just getting used to this movement. And one of the things just to notice is, as you're doing this movement with the left arm, are you tending to grip in the wrist and the hand as if you're trying to take hold of something? And, that, and that's one way of doing the movement, but if possible, try and keep your hand and arm as soft as possible. And think of the movement coming more from the shoulder. So the shoulder slides up towards the ear and then it slides away from the ear towards the ear and away from the ear and one thing you begin to notice that it's not just the shoulder that's part of the reaching of the arm it's actually these ribs underneath the left armpit again if you hold the ribs very still it will kind of interfere with the reaching of the arm Whereas if you can allow the ribs to soften on the left hand side, you can feel how that enables you to reach the arm further. And then you slide the shoulder up to the ear. And then pause and see if you can do the same with the right arm. So 
the instruction is given in terms of the arm, but I'm really thinking of keeping the arm long but soft and the movement coming more from the shoulder blade, so sliding the arm away from me or the shoulder away from the ear and then towards the ear. And again, just sensing that if you can allow the ribs to soften in the armpit area, to sort of get out of the way, that enables you to reach the arm further. And you'll notice as those right ribs close together, these ribs on the left hand side open out. So now we've explored one arm and then the other. See if you can put this movement together. So as the left shoulder slides away from the ear, the right shoulder slides upwards. And as the right shoulder slides from away from the ear, the left shoulder slides upwards. So a little seesaw action, but you're connecting the movement of the two sides. And see again if you can feel that actually it's the ribs, the ribs softening on one side and opening the other that are facilitating or can be part of the movement of the shoulders so that you can begin to think actually that the arm movement is actually being initiated, initiated from your chest and your ribs. Now one thing to notice is, is your head rolling from side to side as you're doing this and that's absolutely fine if you are doing that but see if you for a few movements you can in fact keep the head quiet sort of looking at the ceiling so as you're reaching one arm down and then the other you're keeping the head in the middle and you'll begin to feel if you're allowing the head to stay in the middle it's beginning to bring movement into the base of the neck where that C7 vertebrae is. You can hopefully see there's actually quite a lot of side bending that's going on as I allow the ribs to soften and be part of the movement of the arms. Now pause. If possible, allow the legs to go long again and then bring your right hand over the top of the head. So over the top of the head, not behind the head, over the top of the head, so that the palm of the hand is on top of the crown of the head and your fingertips are just wrapped around the head, so they're just above my left ear. And the elbow you allow to rest out to the side and see if you can begin to slide your head to the right. I'll get rid of the pad for this and then back to centre. So just exploring, sliding the head to the right and back to centre. Now, I just want to bring your attention to something. Often when I ask students to do this in class, we would looking at this in one of the Zoom classes th this week, what tends to happen is they suddenly try to move the head just from the neck. But can you see, to slide the head, it's actually the one shoulder is sliding out, the other is down. So it's just like that movement we were looking at, but with the hand over the head. So to slide the head, I'm thinking less of moving the head from the neck, but actually my chest getting involved, my shoulders get, getting involved. And so the left shoulder slides out, the right shoulder slides down, I'm still looking at the ceiling, so I've not rolled the head to the side. And then slide your head and stay to the right. And Wherever you get to is fine. Don't try and force this. You're just taking yourself to your comfortable limit and stay there. And then see if you can begin to gain, once again, pay attention to your inhalations. And 
the inhalations to the left hand side of the of the chest excuse me for not looking at the camera all the time whilst i'm doing this and so you again you follow the air into the nostrils over the trachea at the palate sorry down the trachea into the bronchioles and again see if you can in this rather funny strange position think of creating length down to the pelvis on the left hand side and length all the way along the side towards the armpit area and the shoulder area and then as if the breath is also reaching continuing to reach towards the neck and the ear on the left hand side And again, you may find that some parts here are very clear. You might feel the expansion into the ribs or the belly very clearly. Feel the movement or the expansion of the ribs in the middle to upper part, but not so clearly into the armpit area. So bring your attention to the less clear areas and see if you can stay there to create this sense of the breath being sucked or drawn into those areas, into the area of the lower neck, to create this constant sense of length with the inhalation, and also with breathing, drawing the breath out to the sides, and then also depth towards the ceiling and down towards the floor. And you will may begin to feel as you keep the attention on the breath uh, a little bit of release in these neck muscles. Now, um, pause, bring yourself back to centre with the head and on the chest, and then try once again taking yourself to the right, and you may discover again it's like magic. Really, um, that suddenly you can go a bit further with the head to the right. Certainly I can. Now, once you are to the right again, stay there. And this time, begin to draw your attention to the breath on the right-hand side. So again, it's a slightly peculiar position, but your side bend, see if you can still think of creating length into the right hand side, down to the pelvis, towards the leg and the foot, length to, into the sides of the body, and length all the way up to the right corner, the right hand side of the chest. And, and length also along the neck, along the spine on the right hand side, towards the right ear. Are you still able to pay attention to the passage of the air into the nostrils, over the palate, down the trachea, into the bronchioles, and then spreading out, diffusing out into the side to create length and width and depth, keeping the jaw nice and relaxed? And once you've done that a few times, stayed with the breath there, come back to centre, and then again, just test. Are you able to go a little bit further without strain to the right? And then this time, bring your attention to both sides of the trunk. So you're thinking of creating length into the left-hand side and the right-hand side simultaneously, allowing the breath to create length all the way down towards the feet, still feeling that sense of the diaphragm descending, the ribs expanding, and length all the way up to the up to the ears, and width and depth. And then carefully come back to centre. And when you come back to centre, rest the arms down by your side 
and then please roll the head well, to the right and to the left. <laughs> and and it, it is sometimes bizarre, the change. Like I almost just feel as when my head could roll all the way on along the floor um, to the side on the right. It's very clear. And, and whereas to the left, I feel, oh, it's more happening higher up. Whereas here, to the right, you can maybe feel yourself. The ribs are part of the movement. I can feel the rolling all the way down my spine to the pelvis to uh, help with the rolling of the head. And in fact, I can feel as though one side is definitely longer than the other. Now, please bring your legs back to standing and then bring your attention to your pelvis and see if you can just do a very small movement of taking your pelvis, sliding it a little bit to the right and then come back to centre. So you're just, you have to press into the feet a little bit just to help clear the friction of the floor to take the pelvis a little bit to the right and then you bring it back to centre. Now, when I ask my students to do this, they often make a much bigger movement. Please, please, please keep the movement small. The idea here is not to tilt the pelvis with the left side coming higher than the right. It is quite literally just to slide it a little bit to the right so the pelvis stays even. To use the technical term that Feldenkrais used, you translate the pelvis to the side. You're not trying to roll the pelvis to the side. So just practice taking it a little bit to the side and bringing it back without tilting. Just taking it a little bit to the side and bringing it back. Once you've mastered that, bring the right hand over the top of the head again. So the fingers just make contact with the left ear. And once again, slide your head, shoulders and chest to your comfortable um, range to the right and stay there. Face is still looking at the ceiling. And bring your attention once more to the inhalations on the right hand side of the body. So I think again of creating length, and width and depth. See if I can still pay attention to the movement of the air into the nostrils, over the palate, down the trachea, into the bronchioles, and the right hand side. And as you paying attention to the inhalations, see as you inhale, can you just take the pelvis a little bit to the right and then bring it back. So as you, I inhale, I think of taking the pelvis a little bit to the right and then bring it back to the right as I inhale and then bring it back just to the right. and then bring it back. So it's hard to do this and talk at the same time, so hopefully if you're doing it at home, you're inhaling as you're reaching into the right hand side to create length, as you take the pelvis to the right and back to centre. And then the next time you do this, see if you can bring the attention to the breath on the left side as you create length and still take the pelvis to the right and back to centre. To the right and back to centre as you're inhaling deliberately or with attention into the left hand side from the pelvis all the way up to the ear and come back to centre. And then once you do it, paying attention to the breath on the right hand side as you take the pelvis to the right back 
and then inhaling to the left hand side from the pelvis to the ear as you take the pelvis to the right. And then think of the breath coming into both sides, inhaling, lengthen in the right and the left as you take the pelvis to the right and back to centre. And then leave it alone, bring yourself back to centre, just take a rest for a moment. Just again, allowing the breath to come into both sides to the right and the left side, giving it that three dimensionality. And then just explore what's it like to roll the head one side and then the other. Now, I feel really clearly the ease of the rolling to the right, but what I wasn't expecting so much is for that to have made it easier to the left too now. I can feel the rolling coming much further down, down the spine. And one of the wonderful things about this lesson I've discovered from doing it a couple of times and teaching it a couple of times this week it actually can be a fabulous lesson if you've been experiencing tightness um, or restriction in the area of the neck. It's, uh, it's very helpful, you may find, for, for that. And then this time we have to do the other side, bring the left hand over the top of the head. So the palm of the left hand is on the crown of the head, my fingers are just wrapped around the side. And then just see what it's like to take the head, of course not just the head, the shoulders and the chest to the left, and back to centre. So notice I'm keeping my face and nose looking to the ceiling. So I'm not rolling the head, I'm same spot on the back of the head is in contact with the floor. I'm sliding the head to the left and then back to centre but see if you can also feel it's the ribs and the chest that of course are helping to do that movement. And then stay to the left hand side and begin to draw your attention to your inhalations on the right hand side. So we're obviously side bent to the left. It helps to create opening in the ribs on the right hand side so see if you can take advantage of that extra space and really let the breath reach or roll, be sucked, whatever the word you like to use, the visualization you like to, to use, to be to use the breath to create that sense of length or reach down into the foot, all the way up into the corner of the armpit and all the way up the neck to the right ear, so just using the breath and your attention to the breath to create space. And if you find again it's there are certain areas, it might be this upper part where it's less clear for you that sense of movement or space. Don't try and force anything, but see if you can just spend a moment noticing what's different here to there to there, um, the lower part, and see if you can just again create that sense of length, width, depth, reaching the breath into all parts. And once you've spent a few minutes breaths on the right hand side, then bring your attention to the left hand side. Just focusing on the this difference between the right hand side and the left and letting the breath create, even in this peculiar position, a sense of length, reaching the breath to the foot, to the sides, to the corner of the shoulder, this sense of length and towards the ear, along the neck, towards the ear on the left hand side.
and then alternate between the right hand side creating length on the inhalation and then the left hand side to create length so you're going to the right with the inhalation and to the left with the inhalation and then think of both sides of the trunk using the uh, attention on the inhalation to create length and expansion, depth and width with the breath. Just again, we're checking the jaw is free of tension, the breath is nice and easy. And then both sides together, simultaneously thinking of the breath into both sides of the chest the trunk, the abdomen, the floor, the back and then carefully bring yourself back to centre you want, may just want to test how it is <laughs> to go to the left so, whoa, so clear now and come back rest the arms and then just roll the head a little bit from side to side oh, I really you know, I feel the head could roll, roll along the floor to the side. So, now, um, bring your legs back to standing and just try tr translating your pelvis to the left and bring it back to the left. So remember, you're not rolling the pelvis, you're just sliding a little bit to the left and come back. And then bring the left hand over the top of the head again slide the head and chest to the left and stay there to your comfortable degree and then begin to inhale to the left to the left hand side with length and as you do that take the pelvis a little bit to the left as you're breathing in and then bring it back so you're inhaling to create length all the way along the left side if you take the pelvis to the left and bring it back inhaling and bring it back once you've done a few with the inhaling to the left hand side then bring your attention to the right hand side Think of creating length in the right hand side from pelvis all the way around the spine to the ear as you take the pelvis to the left and come back. And then as we did on the other side, alternate the attention to the left hand side, creating length and bring the pelvis back. And then the right hand side creating length, so it's wrapping around the spine, coming back. And then a few breaths on both sides of the space, still think of creating length in the spine, and then coming back. You begin to feel, again, if you let that sense of length to both sides, how this area, so I'm pointing at the of the base of the neck, the clavicle area, the shoulder blade area, that movement of the inhalation, how the, this breath can create change there. Good. Now come back to centre, carefully bring the head and shoulders and chest back to centre, let the legs go long and then please roll the head a little bit from side to side. Now, pause and bend the knees. And if you wanted to, you could finish the lesson there, get enormous benefit from it. But there is another variation to come that can be a bit more challenging, but is, can be wonderful to do, which is why I want to share it with you. But essentially, it's lying down, involves lying down on the front. So if that position isn't so clear for you, feel free just to skip this part of the lesson. But if you are doing it, please begin 
by lying down on your on your front. Now, I'm going to take my glasses off just to help me do this. And if possible, have one hand on top of the other and rest your left cheek, the left cheek, the left ear on the backs of the hands. So my face is turned to look towards my right elbow. And then bend your knees and um, have the feet pointing up towards the ceiling. And imagine your legs have been glued or tied together. So you have a single limb. The legs are together, the knees are together, the feet are together to create a single, a single um, limb. And begin to explore, going carefully, tilting your legs to your left or behind you and then bring them back to centre. So you're just exploring, tilting the legs to the left and back to centre. Now you'll notice if your legs are tied together, the right thigh rests on the left as the legs go further and then you bring them back to centre. But hopefully you'll also feel how the weight in the body shifts to the left hand side of the chest. So I'm not trying to keep my pelvis still and just move from the lower back. I'm letting my weight shift to the left hand side of the breastbone and the chest. Good. Now, just, just explore this movement and then take a rest for the legs just for a second. So that really is just a preparatory movement. So when you are ready, bring your legs back to that bent position. Glue the legs together in your imagination again and then this time, go carefully, go carefully, tilt the legs to the right and back to centre a few times. So this time you'll see it's my left leg that's resting on the right and then come back to centre. But you need to be careful because obviously because my your head is turned to the right this movement puts more of a twist in the spine. So be kind and patient with yourself. If you only get the legs here, that's fine. Um, some of you will be able to take them much further. But don't strain to do this. It's not worth it. It's not the point of the movement. You just take the legs to the left where you can comfortably hold them and breathe and then in this position excuse me difficult to explain whilst doing it bring your attention to the breath on the left hand side bring your attention so for me that's here and you think of creating length with the inhalation all the way along the spine to the neck and the ear all the way down to the pelvis and a sense of width to the spine and out to the sides and depth too. And you get this very nice feeling if you let the breath create this sense of length, the breath wrapping, curling all the way around the spine. And you can perhaps see what happens as I allow that, my legs begin to sink a little bit further. But I'm not trying to make that happen. I'm just staying with the breath. All the way up the neck, around the spine. And then bring your attention to the right hand side of the chest. And see if you can create length in this strong position. Length in the right hand side. Letting the belly out, letting that expansion, and then both sides. And then carefully come back to centre 
and rest. So you can rest with the backs of the hands on the, uh, sorry, the forehead on the backs of the hands, or you, you can change your position. And then if you want to do the next variation, we'll do it to the other side. So you would turn your head, sorry to turn the back of my head, but it might be interesting for you to see this from the same position. I turn my head towards my left elbow. First of all, you bend the knees, glue them together, and go carefully, begin to tilt the legs, first of all, to the right, and come back just to get used to the movement, just to get used to the movement. And then tilt the legs to your left, and stay there, wherever is comfortable for you. Sorry to show my tongue. And then bring your attention to the breath on your right hand side. See if you can allow the breath to be, to create that length and width. I can feel the breath moving into these ribs here. As if the breath is wrapping around the spine. It's just marvellous feeling. And then pay attention to the left hand side. And then the right hand side. And both sides. And then carefully come back to centre. Let the legs go long. And come and rest on your back. Absolutely love that variation. It really this sense of the breath coiling around your spine, around your centre. So, just take a moment to notice the contact into the floor. Roll the head from side to side. See how it feels. And then um, bend the knees. Transition to the side and come to sit, but take your time if you need to, to do that. So um, I'll end the lesson formally there, but I'd encourage you when you come to stand, um, just to take a moment in standing, just to notice how that feels, how you feel um, in turning, how the freedom of the head is. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, then please um, hit the subscribe button. And stay safe in this virus situation.